If you have the current channel version of XL365, you now have regex and trim range. I'm going to talk about how you can use these and maybe why you shouldn't. But quick shout out, thank you to Victor and Anne, our first members on the Access Analytic channel. Check out the membership options. Thanks to Victor and Anne. Hope you get some value out of your membership. Okay, let's talk about the version. You need current channel build and at least, I think it came out in 2501, but definitely 2502 because that's the version I'm working on. Um, and what does it do? What does regex do? Well, we can start with this. How do you extract a date from a list? Okay, pretty tricky to do with traditional formulas, but I don't know the answer. Okay, because regex equals regex. There's a few functions, extract, replace, and test. So you can find a value with a true false or extract the bit of text you're after or replace. However, the code you need to write is really unintuitive. So I have got a chat GPT and it's called the Excel regex assistant. And this is available in the chat GPT store. And I can say, what regex pattern can I use to do the following? Okay, so then I go back into my Excel file, copy the whole picture if it's not sensitive data. Don't pay sensitive data into ChatGPT. So just to save time, I'm going to paste that. And I haven't even told it I want to extract the dates other than the fact that it's made bold. and it's working out the pattern. And then it says, here's the regex formula. It's given me some options, but I'm just gonna copy this first one, paste the formula, change it from A1 to refer to A2, and press enter. And it's extracted the first one, and if I double click, it just works, but look at that. That's a horrible function. Now you can start delving into it. In fact, my GPT, okay, will actually explain what's going on within here. This pattern works as follows. So you can then understand it and start to learn a little bit at a time. But that's pretty cool. Okay, next one, more complicated. The dates are all very different. So I'm going to copy that and say, try this instead. It's given me a breakdown of how the regex is working and it's given me the formula. Okay, it's also spitting out some test data and the expected results. So I'm going to go back into here, paste the cell. It's not A1, it's that one. And there we go. It's finding the dates, which is pretty cool. Okay. Email is a common example, so let's give that a go. Again, I would just type in some dummy data with a couple of rows, but just for this demo purpose, you know, it's, it's fake data, so I don't mind pasting it in here. Oh, copy the formula once it's done it. Come back into here. It's not A1, it's this cell. There we go. Fill that down. Pretty cool. Okay, and I'll make this file available so you can all see the code. You can even use that code. Right, I had an issue the other day where um, I did a video on it about non-breaking spaces. So these look the same, but they don't match. False, okay, because there's a non-breaking space in here. So 
I am going to ask, I'll just go in here, how to remove non-breaking space from a string. Okay, so it's telling me to use regject replace. Or I can use substitute. This removes both normal spaces and non-breaking spaces. So I'm just going to copy this one. Come in here, paste it. It's not A1, it's going to be that one. Just want to replace it with an actual space. Okay, and then if I check, does this now equal the normal one? True, it does. Okay, because I've got rid of the non-breaking space. And then you can also use regex inside xlookup and xmatch now. So, in the intro said maybe you shouldn't be using these. You're already in trouble when you have your data in this sort of mess. So maybe Power Query is the solution to tidy up your data before it ends up in Excel or go back to your source systems and fix up your issues. You don't really want to be using regex, okay, in the ideal world. However, there are scenarios, quick fixes, ad hoc analysis, things we just can't solve it another way where this can come in handy. Same thing for this, this X lookup concept. You know, my data should be fixed up first. But in a scenario where you have no other option, let's say I want to find the word harp or the word piano and bring back a match, the first match. So I can actually do an X lookup and then this is the code for finding the exact word harp and the exact word piano. If you just want to find the word harp, but harpsichord or something like that is fine, then you don't need the slash B, the slash B. You can just put harp, com, uh, pipe, piano, or multiple fields like that. But the key thing is this number three at the end. This is the match mode, okay, which basically is regex match mode. So you put your regex code at the start, and then you say, it's going to be regex match mode and therefore it's finding the word harp and bring me back 30. Now if this said harps it now brings back 50 which is where it's finding piano. Plus you could do something like I want to find the number 55 inside a list of items. So I'm looking up 55 in this column I want to bring back this column and I just do comma, comma, and then three is regex match. So it's just finding it anywhere in that string without having to do a big substitute or find and replace or search or anything like that. So some pretty useful, you know, use cases for, for regex. Trim range. I'm not so sure about trim range. What does it do? Well, Let's say I want to do a, a lookup, so equals x lookup, for this comma, and I just pick the entire column, comma, bring back the match here. Okay, that works perfectly fine, but it can potentially cause performance issues referencing entire columns. So what you could do is rather than referring to C, you can actually do trim range C. Okay, and that, you know, if I move this down a little bit out the way to avoid confusing anyone, this is now just the trimmed range. So applying that logic, I could come up here and actually put a trim range around both of these. So trim range on column C and trim range on column B. And you may find performance improvements because it's only looking at the trimmed area, the, the sort of uh, relative area. I think it's, again, please use tables rather than trim range. Um, table structure is much better. 
it's more robust. So trim range for me is like a, a last resort. One example I sort of come across that I thought, well, that could be good, was, again, sort of trim range. Imagine I highlight these three rows or four rows. Okay, so it's, it's down to that. And then I could wrap that in a transpose. Put a bracket on the end. Um, but again, if somebody sort of types something in here, like a little note or something, it does stuff your formula up. So again, it's not that robust. So I'm a little bit wary currently of trim range. Also, there's another option. Rather than writing trim range, we can now, if I do... Okay, rather than the colon, we can now do a full stop either side. Okay, which again, I'm not sure if I really like this option, but if you ever see this, it's be, that's what it's doing. It's getting rid of the leading spaces um, or empty cells. And within trim range, you do have, let's say I want to trim that column there, you do have the option of tree, trimming just the leading or just the trailing or both. So you do have functionality in there for both the columns and the rows. Let me just move this up a bit. So you can have row trim mode and column trim mode. So that's the concept. Now I'd be really keen to know what useful real world examples people are using this for, so please leave that in the comments. I'm yet to be convinced that trim range is something I'm ever going to use very often. Um, tables just, you know, have always been good enough for me. I've never really felt the need for trim range. Um, regex, I can see some use cases, but again, Power Query normally solves most of these problems, and I very rarely have these sorts of scenarios. But lovely to know they're there if and when I ever need them. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Check out the membership. You get early access to my videos. We'll be doing a live stream and various other bits for members. And please check out this other video and this playlist on Excel stuff that you might find interesting. All right, I'll catch you later. Thank you.